listeners and viewers, welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency, Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership, our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors, especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-00545 or 080-383-62072. Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng Our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com Our YouTube channel, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State Our Twitter handle, at Kaduna underscore MOE Or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State Stay safe, stay at home and learn well Thank you, happy listening and happy viewing Hello Learners, you are welcome to the practical session of our e-learning organized by Kaduna State Minister of Education. We are going into the second part of our practicals. The first part has been conducted on electricity. For the second one, we are looking at mechanics. As you all know, physics is divided into six branches, and out of those branches, the OLEX extra practicals to give for students. It has been informed, or you've been informed, that we have three practicals in a given exam. So you are expected to answer two out of the three. And for the one that have been conducted, you have this as a second, and we are looking at mechanics. On the mechanics, we are looking at the simple pendulum as a practical to be carried out. The procedure is as can be seen on the board. Here we have the diagram of the pendulum that we have given there. By my right hand side, you have the cork, you have the retro stand and clamp, and then you have the bulb, a string that tied the bulb to the cork, split cork, and you have the length of the simple pendulum is measured from the point of suspension of the cork, the uh, string here, to the middle of the bulb. It must be at the middle, not at the end or at the top of the ball. It must be at the middle, very important. Now, you have the procedure given to us as follows. You are provided with the retro stand. As I say, we have the retro stand there, clamp and bolts, you can see it there, and a pendulum ball, a piece of thread that connects the ball and the cog and other necessary apparatus, which are our stop clock and our meter rule are these other apparatus that are very important and your graph, which you are going to use. You are to carry out the following experiments. The first step under that is set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram above, as has been explained. That's the first step. Two, measure and record the distance L, small letter, equals to 130 centimeter from the center of the bulb to the point of suspension of the bulb. From the center of the bulb to the point of suspension of the bulb, that is what you have here. 
Step three, displace the pendulum through a small angle and release. You displace it and release through a small angle, very important. Allow the pendulum to oscillate freely. You allow it to on its own to move freely. Next, step four, determine the time, small t, for 20 complete oscillations. Determine the time, small t, for 20 complete oscillations. Also, step five, determine the period, capital T, of the oscillations. V six, evaluate T square, that is your period square, and capital L, which is equal to the length of suspension of the bulb minus 30. That's what we are going to evaluate. Then you have step seven. You have to repeat the procedure for four other values of L equals to 110, 90, 70, and 50 cm centimeters. Step eight. In each case, Determine small t, that's a time for complete oscillation as in step four. And evaluate capital T, which is a period of oscillation. T square, you square your capital T, that is a square the period, and your L also evaluate capital L, which have been set up as in six above. Now, you tablet your readings. That is, you write down your readings. And then step nine, plot a graph of T square on the vertical axis against capital L on the horizontal axis, starting both axes from the origin. And the origin has values there denoting the first one here is your horizontal axis value, which is the beginning of the reading of your capital L, along which you're going to plot your horizontal. And then the second one is representing the face value for your vertical axis, which is our T square axis. So T square axis along vertical, starting from zero, the second one, and then L, capital L, starting from zero also, which is our origin, where the two axes intersect each other. Number step 10, you determine the slope S of the graph. After plotting your graph, determine the slope of the graph. Now, also determine the intercept, small c. The slope is small s, and our intercept is small s, a c, of the graph on the t square axis. That is, the intercept on the t square axis will be determined at letter c. Then step 11, evaluate 1. Capital is a K1 equals to 4 pi square over S, where S represents your slope. 2. K2 is equal to C over S. Our C is our intercept on the T square axis. Our S is a slope of the graph. Taking our pi, which is a constant, as 22 over 7. Then after everything, you now step 12. This is step 10, step 11, step 10. You now, is step 12. State two precautions taken to ensure accurate result. And by the time you reach up to this step, which is the A part of this, you have 21 marks. Then the B part says we are to I. B subscript, I mean, B I says what is meant by the period of oscillation of an oscillating bulb, body. What is meant by period of oscillation of an oscillating body? And that will give you two marks. The B part, the B uh, two is explain acceleration of free fall due to gravity. That is also two marks. And this is a question we extracted from Pass Wayek 2007. We go into the real practicals as we read through the procedure. And on the practical, the setup of the apparatus, as you can see, we measure the length of the pendulum ball from the center of the ball to the point of suspension. And this is how you do it because it's more than one meter. We will measure it as it is. By the time you measure your 
100 centimeter, you now add your 30. With this, we have major 130 centimeter, and we're going to now start our oscillation with the clock at the same time. Please don't forget, you must check your stop clock and everything to see that it's working. And the pointer should be at exactly the zero mark here on the 60. Now, this is checking zero error. It's very important. That's one of the precautions that is necessary. Now, otherwise, it leads to what we call systematic error. So, I will start by displacing at a small angle my pendulum bulb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. With what I have here is around 44. So I take my reading, 44. It took me 44 seconds for the 20 complete oscillations to be done. So after this, we now take our second reading. And by the procedure given, the second reading, the second length is going to be 110 centimeter. So we will adjust our length of the pendulum to 110 centimeter. And this is how we do it. As simple as that, you will pull it up to reduce the extent of the length. So all you need to do is to count 120, I mean to count 20 centimeters, subtract from our 130. I've measured. Our 110 centimeter is the second value of the length of the pendulum from the center of the pendulum. Please don't forget that it must be from the center of the pendulum, very important from the point of suspension to about, that's exactly what we have there. Now, you will take your reading again, the same 20 oscillations for this second reading. We do the same thing, just displace your bulb at a small amplitude. And then, as you release your bulb, you own your stop clock at the same time, simultaneously. And we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You take it that anytime you are doing your counting, once it's getting to 20 complete relation, please place your hand at the stop clock so that you will do exactly what is required. From what we have taken, we can see that the timing for 110 length oscillation to complete a 20 oscillations is 41. We are written it down after which we tablet. Again, the stop reading is going to be 90 centimeter from the point of suspension of the ball. Again, we make an adjustment to read 90 centimeter as against what we have there. Here we have a meter rule, which is 100 centimeter rule and we can easily read our 90 centimeter directly from you. We don't, need to, we don't need to do the double reading as we have done for the phase two values. We have 90 degree less than 100 centimeter. Our point of suspension to the center of the bulb is the length of the pendulum small l.
So we do your adjustment very gently and be sure that you are doing what is required. Don't ever be in a hurry. Just take your time and don't be nervous. It's something you can Please once again be sure that it is from the center of the bulb. Mark where your 90 centimeter is. Please and be sure that the tightening is firm to avoid any random dangling of the bulb, not to give us what we want. So with this, again we took our third reading, which is of length 90 centimeter. As I said, it must be simultaneous reading taken for the counting and the release of the bulb, the timing. Again I said, we release at the same time, place your hand on the stop clock where you hold the bulb at a small angle or amplitude and release it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That is that. And by what you have is 37. So we have, for the third reading, you have 37 seconds. And then you take it again to measure. The next value after 90 is 70 centimeter. Again, you make your adjustment of the length of the pendulum from the point of suspension to the center of the ball taking 70 centimeter please don't forget that you will place your eye level horizontally on the meter rule to avoid parallax error as you do this work because without that you will run into problem we have 70 centimeter for our next reading so the value to be taken must be from the center of the ball. Be careful to avoid parallax error by placing your eye level on the meter rule horizontally. Again, for the fourth reading, we have 70 centimeter and we take our stop clock. Always make sure that the pointer is clearly the zero level so that you avoid parallax uh, error by, um, take note of zero error, to avoid systematic error. Again, we start at the same time as you displace your ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What we have here is 30, 32.6, 32 32.6. So we write it down, 32.6. That's for 50 centimeter, 70 centimeter rather. The next last one now we are taking is our 50 centimeter. And for 50 centimeter, you take your measurement again from the center of the bulb to the point of suspension of the pendulum. I say don't ever be in a hurry and don't be nervous. Avoid the exam fever so that you don't make unnecessary mistakes. Actually, by the time you finish taking your reading, other procedure will not be issue. This is our last reading. 
Please observe that when we start the oscillation start, it will be fast, but along as it progresses, you see that it starts becoming slow. It is because of what we call damping. Damping is the reason behind it. So for this last one, we do the same thing. Your pendulum bulb is displaced at the small angular amplitude and then release it simultaneously. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Well, what we have here is 20. We have the timing for the last length, 50 cm, is, you can see 25, 26, 27, 28 points around 2, 28.2, 28.2. And that's what we just need for this. After that, we state our tablet, our readings have been instructed. So in tablating your readings, you take note. I will advise you can make a sketch of the table of values or your observations, then after that, you do your plotting. The procedure is very important that you observe it. Please don't forget, your strict adherence to the procedure matters a lot. It will help you to avoid waste of, wasting of time and confusion and going out of what is expected. Don't forget, if you don't listen or adhere to instruction, you run into problem. So what we are asked to do first is we have to tablet our readings. We go back to the eighth state. In each case, determine small t and evaluate capital T. That's step eight. Then T square and capital L. Then you tabulate your readings. Then in our readings, we always have the heading written as, if you want, you can say observations or table of values or table of readings. Now, you can have what we call serial number to help you know how many readings you took. The first item there is our small L, which is the length of suspension of the pendulum. And the unit is centimeter given. So the unit you are written against the physical quantity L takes care of the unit you are written against the value. So it's very important you write the unit at the heading, which will now help take care of it and you will lose no marks. If you don't write the unit, you run into problem, they will deduct mark for you. The second item there is our small t. And our small t is a time taken for complete oscillation for each of the corresponding lengths. And then, don't forget, time is in second. You write small s in bracket. What we're having in bracket is showing us our unit of the fiscal quantity. Then they say we are to evaluate capital T. How do we evaluate capital T? Capital T simply means period of oscillation of a pendulum. Period of oscillation. And what you do there is, the time taken for one complete oscillation is our capital T. And how do you determine that? The time taken for 20 oscillation, which is small t, you divide it by 20. And that will now give you our capital T. So capital T is the same as small t over 20 and again we have it in second whether period or time is the same with this you go to the next one which is our t square you square the pendulum then the next one is our capital l which is the difference between the length of what you have taken and 30 given don't forget when you have your period in second, if you square the period, you also ought to square the unit. Here you also have our capital L is the same unit with our small L, and that's what we have here, very important. I repeat that the unit you are writing against, if it's got quantity in the column, takes care of what you are writing against each of the value. The first value given to us for the length, small L is 130, and we have it as one. The second one is 110. 
The third one is 90. The fourth one is 70. And the last one is 50. Now, our time taken for 130 centimeter to complete 20 oscillation is giving us 44. And the second value for the 110 is 41. The third one is 37. You have 32.6 and then 28.2. Please, very important. Now, in any reading you are taking, the degree of accuracy or the placement of the decimal point matters. They must agree. There must be agreement. Here you have two of them have to one decimal place. What the other ones are in whole number. So you will need to introduce a digit, a decimal point. And if you do, you don't leave it hanging. You will put zero to close up. The same thing goes here. You introduce decimal point and zero. The zero doesn't mean anything. It's the same as just 44. But you introduce it so that it will be in agreement with what you have here. So for our time, 20 complete oscillations for each of the length given, you have the corresponding values given and to one decimal place. The next thing is we have to divide our small t by 20 to give us the period. Period, once again, is the time taken for one complete oscillation. So for one complete oscillation, you divide the time taken for the 20 complete oscillations by 20. Now, we've been able to obtain our values of time taken for 20 complete oscillations with the corresponding lengths. Now from the table of observations we have there, the serial number are up to 5, where for the first length is 130. The corresponding time for 20 oscillations is 440, I mean sorry, it's 44.0 second. For the corresponding value, if you get that, you divide that by 2, to, by 20 rather, to give you the time taken for one complete oscillation, which is your period. Capital T is equal to small t over 20, and the time is a second. This is what you're going to have, 2.20 second. Now, if you get the 2.20 second, the next column will be the square of it. If you square it, the value will be 4.840 second. And the last column there is a column of capital L, which is the difference in the length originally given with 30 centimeters. And by the time you subtract 30 from 130, you get 100 centimeters. So a capital L is 100 centimeters against small l, 130. The second value of a small l is 110. And we have the corresponding time taken for 20 complete oscillation is 41.0. Don't forget, we are putting the 0 .0, 0 0.0 just to make it be in harmony with the other ones that have to one decimal place. That is why we have them. And so we have divide the 41.0 by 20, you will get 2.05. And that is in second. If you square it, you have 4.203. And the corresponding capital L length will be, again, 110, small l minus 30 to give you 80, and in centimeter. As I said, the centimeter I written on the topmost column there, or the first row there, has taken care of all the values, the seconds, I mean the unit you are written, takes care of what you could have written against each value there. So you don't need to write all the units and attached to the values you have there. The third one is 90 centimeter for the length. The corresponding time is 37 second. But we put 0 0.0 again just to make it harmonize with the other ones that have to one decimal place. Our capital T is a period divided by 20, you will have 1.85. If you square it, you have 3.423. And if you have 1, 90 minus 30 will give you 60. That is our value of our. Uh, this thing, the second, the third length. And with this, you have 60 for that, you have 40 for this one. Now, our next one, the fourth one is 70 centimeter for the length. The corresponding time taken for 20 complete oscillation is 32.6, and the period is divided by 20 will be 1.63. Our t square, the square of the period will be 2.656. Well, our capital L, which is a length, 
that is capital given to us the difference between the for original land with 30 we give you 60 that is 90 minus 6 minus 30 is 60. our 70 is we give you 70 minus 30 to give you 40. the last one is 50 centimeter for our l our corresponding time for 20 complete oscillation is 28.2 and if you divide by 20 you have 1.41 and the square it you have 1.988 and then with that you have your last value of the length is 20 centimeter that is 50 minus 30 and that's what we have so these are the values for our table and then the next thing is we now go to the plotting of the graph now you will need to take note of the highest value of each of those physical quantity you are to plot on the vertical axis against the horizontal axis we were told from the procedure that we are to plot the graph of t square against capital l which are the two last columns we are considering. So you will look at the highest value there, which is 4.840. And if you look at a, an integral value, a whole number that is appropriate to use will be 5. So, and if you have 4.80, make it a whole number, you have 5. So that 5 will now be used to divide the number of centimeters you have. On the graph, you have up to 24 centimeters, 1 up to 24 on this axis and then on this the horizontal your if we count to see what we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 now in between two thick thick lines we have a centimeter so and in between the two thick lines there are small boxes that are that exist there about five five of each now, on the horizontal, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The 20 big squares is the same as 20 centimeters. So, along our vertical line, you have 24 centimeters, about 20, and then you have 20 on the horizontal. So, what you do is you divide that 24 by 5. If you do, you will get about 4 point something, that is... Four, uh, four points something. So what you do is, you now consider, if you have four points something, what you need to do is, you divide, the, 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 the point there is now, that for each four centimeter, we just, for each four centimeter, four of the square, we, we can be taken as one, cent, one unit. Each of the one, two, three, four uh, squares, which is four centimeter, will be taken as one unit. But because we need to give allowance, anytime we are plotting graph, we don't need to take the whole graph. We will now divide that four by two to make it instead of taking four, four centimeter, we now say four. I mean, uh, two units. I mean, two centimeter to be one unit. So instead of counting four centimeter to represent one unit on the vertical axis, we will divide the four by two to give us. 2 cm represent 1 unit. So along the vertical axis, which is our T-square axis, we have 1, 2, 1 unit, another 2 cm, 2 unit, another 2 cm, 3 unit, and up to, because we have the highest value for the T-square as 4.80, which we said is a 7 or 5, you now write the values up to maybe 6. You can stop at the 6.0. Or if you want, you stop at 5.0. But then we see, give this one so that we can be able to have allowance to plot our slope. Now, along your horizontal axis, our highest value there is 100 centimeter. That is capital L. And then if you divide our 20 centimeter, which we got, the small, small squares, by 100, you will get 0 0.2, which is the same as to ratio one unit. If you, 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 you can now multiply this by 2 to give you 2. Multiply, sorry, multiply this by 2 to give you, by 10 to give you 2. And multiply this by 10 to give you 10. So that is to say, for each 2 centimeter, you can make it 10 units on the horizontal axis. Again, if you do, you are going to occupy the whole graph. So what we do is you divide the 2 by 2, divide this one, I mean just divide this one alone, the 2 units or 2 centimeters by 2. If you do, you have 1 to ratio 10. That is to say, each of the small, I mean, uh, centimeter we have here is representing 10 units. So our scale, the choice of scale is very important. Our scale is on the vertical axis, 2 centimeter is equal to 20 units. Sorry, on the horizontal, rather, 2 centimeters. Now, when we say 1 centimeter is the same as 10 units, is the same as saying 
2 centimeter is equal to 20 units. So on this, we have 20 units on L axis. 2 centimeter is equal to 20 units on L axis. And on the vertical axis, you have 2 centimeter is equal to 1 unit on T square axis. Now, with the scaling and the title of the graph, don't forget the title of the graph is a graph of T square in S square, second square against L in centimeter. Now, after having taken our scale and written the title of the graph, and we have also calibrated the values on the different axis, the next thing is we now go to the plotting of our graph. To plot our graph, you always take a look at the corresponding values of those two physical quantities you are to plot their values. The first one there is T square. Our T square has 4.840 for its value. The corresponding value there is 100 for L. So along our horizontal axis, our 100 is here. But then along the, the vertical axis, you have 4.80. If you go back to the vertical axis in between 4 and 5 is going to be our 4.840 so again we will divide this into between the 4 and the 5 you have just one unit that is to say divide that one unit by 10 there are 10 small squares between 4.0 and 5.0 and since there are 10 divide one unit, which is the difference between 5 and 4, one unit by the number of small squares between the two values. If you do, you are going to have 0 0.1. That 0 0.1 implies that our small unit, I mean, small uh, centimeter square here represents one, 0 0.1 unit. That's what it means. So, if you have 4 here, the first small one there will be 4.1. The next one will be 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. Midway between 4.0 and 5.0 is 4.5. Then if you count up further, you will go to have 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, and finally you have 5. That gives you that for each of these small, small square along your vertical is represented by what? 0.1 unit. Very important. The scaling is important to be able to help you not to get lost as you start or to get confused. Now, along this axis too, the horizontal you have, each of the value there is 10 centimeter. I mean, uh, each of the centimeter is the same as 10 uh, unit. So if you divide 10 by uh, 5, you are going to get 2. That's you say, 2 units for each of the centimeter you have the small, small square. Each of the small, small square have 2 units. By the time you do, you are going to have 10. If you come here, you add 2, 2 again to this place you have. So we now go to look at 100 centimeter, I mean 100 on the horizontal axis, which is our L centimeter axis, is here. Then our corresponding value for T square axis, which is this one we have is 4.840. Now, our 4.80 along the vertical will be after 4.5 here will be 4.6, next will be 4.7, and then 4.8. We have 4.9 and 5. So where you have 4.8, you are going to place, and I will advise you use transparent ruler. You use transparent ruler so that if you place your rule, it will be able to help you see what value you have there. And then by the time you place your ruler, you Look at where your 100 centimeter is. It's easy to read the whole numbers here, which is 100. You just locate it and where they intersect or meet each other, you will make a mark. And that is a point. Every point on a given surface has two values. The values along the horizontal, in this case, is our L centimeter, which is normally X axis. Now, along the vertical, you have T square value which is what we have done and 4.8 there now if this 4 which is after 8 was up to 5 we will take it as 1 and add it to 8 to make it 9 but because it's not up to we discard it and make it rounding down with this first point we are plotted we go to the second point the second point there for the t square is 4.203 
and the corresponding value for the capital L is 80 centimeter. So again, our 80 centimeter does take a step, two step backward on a centimeter, and then 4.20 is just here. After four, you have 0.1, as we said, each of the small square represents 0.1 unit. So 0.1, 0.2 and again the next value there is not up to our five so we discard it and now also draw place your meter rule or your ruler and then locate where your 4.2 is the corresponding value is our 80 for l axis and that is what you have there again you make a mark to give you the second point the next one now is our 3.4 3. And 3.423 is after 3, you have 0.1. This is 3.0. This is 3.2. 3.0, 3.1, And you have 3.4 is here. The corresponding value for your L axis is 60. And 60 is just, you can have it here. You go up where it is to make your mark. After making that mark, the next value is 2.656. So 2.6 is after 2, we have 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and then 2.6. Now after 2.6, the next value is 5. But next to 5 is 6, which is up to 5 or more than. We take it as 1 and add it to that 5. It gives us 2.66. So our 2.6 is will be after here, in between 2.6 here and 2.7 here, supposed to be maybe midway, but we just move a little bit from in between them up, and it will give you, and that will be the same as that of 40. That is the next one. So 2.6 will be here. 2.6 is here. 2.6 we make our plot. The next one is the last one we are looking at, which is for 20 centimeter. Our value is 1.988. Our 1.1.0 1 uh, is here. Our 1.5 is here. Our 1.678 and 9 is here. And then the next value will be 9. After 1.9, the next one should be 9 because 8. Next to it, we take it and round it to be given. So it will be very close to 2. And by the time you consider it, you look at where your 20 is. These are the plots plotting points we have. Now, after doing that, you now go to draw your line of base feet. A line of base feet is a line you draw to cut across at least two points. With other points not on the line scatter on both sides. The line of base feet must pass midway between the points that you have there. Otherwise, you have so, if you place your rule and check where you may have more numbers, the first point, second, third, fourth, and fifth are here. You place your ruler and then check where the line will pass through at least two points because two points are sufficient to give us a straight line. You will see that we are going to have a straight line passing through point two, point three, point four, and then we draw our line. By the time you do that, you now extend it where you're going to take your slope. That's why we needed to give allowance so that we'll be able to see to have extra space. With this now, this is what we refer to as line of base feet. If you check, you will see that the line passed through three points with one point to the right of it and another point to the left. And this is a baseline so far you can plot for these five points. With this, you now go on to the observation or the procedure we were asked to. We now go to draw a find the intercept and then we find the slope. To find the slope, slope simply means vertical interval over horizontal equivalent. What we mean by vertical interval is you will consider two points on this graph outside the points you are plotted. This is your initial, the first point, the last point, fifth point is here. So you will just look between the axis here and this one and check to see which of the points that this line passed through that is exactly at the intercepting. If you check, you will see that one of such points is here. This point is a good point to take. So this is our initial point. 
Then you take our final point. The final point also is advisable. Tom, please don't forget, you want to draw your slope, make sure the slope is large. The slope should cover, cover three quarter of your graph. The smaller the slope, the higher the possibility of getting a wrong value. So it's advisable and you'll be marked down if you get a smaller slope. So the slope should be plot, plotted so that it is large enough to cover three quarter of what you have. So if you want, you can draw it up to this point here. It's a good one. If you do, you now draw a vertical line that we reach up to your axis but don't forget that vertical line will be thick up to what you have for the initial there is a corresponding point there which you are going to consider as where you are having the intersection of your final and this what you have here then the next one we just drop it a dotted line you draw a dotted line from that point to touch your horizontal axis now you take your ruler can i say preferably use transparent ruler transparent ruler is a good one to help you do what you are doing so that you'll be able to see the values clearly. With this, you have this other line drawn. Though you should be a bit fast because time is always against if you are not a bit fast. With this, again, we draw a dotted line to touch our vertical axis which is our t square axis now these are two points we have chosen to mark for our slope the first point here you drop a line from there to touch your horizontal axis which is our l centimeter axis and because it's the initial point we'll write that one as l1 here you have t square one that is the corresponding value of your horizontal and vertical axis from the initial point. You have the description there. Then for the final point, we have already drawn a perpendicular line from that point's initial final to this point here, which is our L2. So the L2 is a final point, and the L1 is your corresponding initial point on the L axis. And then you also draw a line to help you mark the corresponding final point on your vertical axis you join it don't forget dotted line is expected to differentiate it from the other lines you have drawn both the graph and the slope this is what you have so this is our t two two this is our t square one this is our t square two or t two square t one square or t square one now this one has it so from here we now as i said have this we have a delta, a change, change in t square for your vertical, and then this is going to be change in L. Now, from this point to what you have here is what we mean by that. And then from here to this point is what we mean by delta L. As we say, this is a Greek letter, and we say delta. Delta simply means change. So change in T square, and then with a corresponding change in your L. After having done that, the next thing is, from the procedure given to us, we are to calculate some parameters. The first thing is, determine the slope S of the graph, also determine the intercept C of the graph on the t-square axis. Our slope to be determined here is, as I said, it's always written as vertical interval over horizontal equivalent, which is why we are going to write for the corresponding change on your L as it is with your t-square axis. So we have slope, say vertical interval over horizontal equivalent and the slope we were asked to use s for it the vertical imply interval implies your t2 square minus t1 square which is your delta t square 
and the horizontal equivalent means the corresponding or the equivalent change along the horizontal line, which is delta L. And our delta T square implies our T square 2 minus T square 1. Well, our delta L implies L2 minus L1. Then our T2 square or T square 2, we check the value we got there. Along your T square axis, the value where you have along the axis is 7.0, which we write down and write our T1. Our T1 is, as I said, each of the small units along the vertical is 0.1. So we have 1 here. You have 1.5. 1.6, 1.7. And we put, just leave it as 1.7 because you have to want this small place here. Then along our corresponding values for your L delta change, delta and change is L2. L2 is, this is 120. This will be 140. And here will be 160. So between, don't forget, this is each of the, each of the uh, square on the, the big B square on your L axis is representing 10 centimeters, 10, 10 units. So you have 120, and then we have 140, and then 160. In between 140 and 160 is 150. And from 150, as I told you, each of the small square along this one representing two centimeter, I mean two unit. What does that mean? It means if you divide uh, 10, which is the interval you have between 150 and 160 is 10. You divide it by the number of square you have here is two. That is to say each of these one represents. So if you have this one here, it means the L2 is 150.2. What we're going to have here is 150.2. Point two. Then minus our L1. Our L1, here we have 10. You have 10.2, 10.4, 10.6, 10 10.8. I take it again. This is 10. Though we decided to leave it out, not to make it clumsy. That's why we just ignore the odd values. And so we have uh, the, the other values, not odd. We have 1, 10. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, I mean 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and sorry, it's not point. This is 12, rather, this is 10. We say it's 2, 2 units. So 10 plus 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16, plus 2 is what? 18, and then plus 2, making 20. So that is what we have here. It should be L1 is 16. That is 16, 3 of it. So we have 150 minus 16. Again, we have 16 as a whole number, but we put a decimal point and add 0 to it to make it agree what you have here. The next thing is the deduction we have here. Our 0 minus 7 cannot go. You have 3. 1 is taken from here. 6 minus 1 will give you 5. And then here you have 2 with this. We give you 2. And 0 with 6 will not go. We have 4. You have taken one here, 4 minus 1 is 3, 1. Now, you divide 5.3 by 134.2. And don't forget, our T square is having S square for its value. Well, this one is in centimeters. So, our unit for the slope is S square over CM. That's second square over centimeter. And that's what we have here. So, S square over CM. Yes, our S slope is equal to 153 point. We give you 0 0.03, 0 0.0394. 0 0.0394, that is S square per centimeter. This is our slope. Now, after doing that, they say we should also look for the intercept on the T square axis. Our intercept on the T square axis then will be written as our intercept is if we check where our graph plot, I mean, touch your axis, T square axis, is exactly at one. 
So our C, which is a symbol representing intercept, is giving us 1.0 S square, which is second square, because the axis is T square and is squared. So we have that. So that's our slope and that is our intercept. Next on the question, don't forget, that is the A part of the question. The B part, we say we are having these values to determine. That is the tenth question. Step X is determining the slope and intercept. These are the ones then. Last, I mean, the next is X1, which is 1. We are to determine our K1, 4 pi square over S. Our k1. We are to find k1 equals to 4 pi square over s. And our pi is a constant, as we said. We are asked to use pi as 22 over 7. And then you will square it and then divide by the slope value. The slope value is 0 0.0394. 0 0.0394. Don't forget our. Pi is a constant, doesn't have unit, but the slope has unit, which is second square per centimeter. 22 divided by 7, and then square it. Okay, multiply by 4. Divide by 0 0.0394. Don't forget, your second square per centimeter is in the numerator. You can divide it by, just say, divide by s to power 2 per second. And then you introduce multiplication to take the reciprocal. It will be cm per s square. This is your unit. 1, 0, 0, One, zero, zero two, 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 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, our K1 gives us this value. Now, from this value, we now change our centimeter, which is not the SI unit of length, to the normal SI unit. What's the SI unit of length? It's meter. And we are expected as students, students are expected to know this, that this C stands for centi and is a submultiple prefix. The centi simply means 10 to power minus 2. And the meter m remain per second square. Now, what does it mean by 10 to power minus 2? In your JS or lower class, you must have learned about what we call standard form. Changing from one standard form to ordinary form, from ordinary form to standard form. Anytime you are multiplying a number by a power of 10, either multiple or multiple, you will now take, if it's a negative power, you move a decimal point to the left based on the power you have. From here, we have power 2. So we take it to the left, 1, 2. That will give you 10.028 and meter per second square. That is our K1. Our K1, therefore, is giving us 10.028 meter per second. If you approximate it, it's the same as 10 meter per second square. This is our K1. And from this, every unit of a physical quantity describes that physical quantity. Velocity is measured in meter per second. Acceleration is meter, measured in meter per second square. So from the unit, you can deduce and you can tell what parameter, what physical quantity is that. Now, in case you are asked, though we were not asked here, but in case you are asked to interpret this K1, what does K1 stand for? K1, the physical quantity, the phenomenon just refer to acceleration due to gravity. And in every place, whether in the, at the equator or the polar regions, the uh, acceleration due to gravity vary from place to place. So in this place, anywhere you go, the approximate value of acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square. That's the approximate value. 
but the exact value is 9.81 meter per second and so our k1 is 10 meter per second this is agree with the standard value of oscillation due to gravity which is 10 meter per second square and this is exactly what you have here and with this we go to the next question we say we are to find ii our k2 what is k2 from what we are asked to find we are to find k2 as c over s c over s our slope is our c and which is one our s is our sorry our c is our intercept which is 1.0 s 1.0 second square our slope we got to be 0 0.0394 we now divide by 0 0.0394 don't forget it's in s square per centimeter but the slope is in second square and that's what you have here so from here you see that we can take the reciprocal again by having k2 to be equal to 25.38 and our numerator has a unit as s square then the denominator is second s square over centimeter which is the same if you take the reciprocal it becomes centimeter per s square and this is s square s square will cancel what will be left with is k2 equal to 25 to a whole number centimeter again this one is telling us that our unit is in centimeter meaning that is a length k2 therefore is 25 centimeter which is a length that we have for that where we have the slope dividing our intercept we have the value as 25 centimeter and these are the values we are expected to have with this we go to the next question which is our step 12 what we have just done is x1. So our x2, that is step 12, will be step 2 precautions taken to ensure accurate result. In the course of our procedure and our work here, yeah, I mentioned that the amplitude should not be too high or too much. Then anytime you are taking the value on your meter rule, make sure that the eye level is at horizontal. Your eye level is at the horizontal. On, on, uh, is, is at horizontal level your eye level should be horizontal when taking the you know value on the meter when you are taking it on the other hand when it is uh, the, the instrument is vertical i mean horizontal place horizontally you place it vertically directly above that object with this we have number one the precaution given there is this anytime i ensure that my eye level was placed horizontally to avoid parallax error. My eye level was placed horizontally to avoid parallax error. Number two, I check the zero error. That is, you make sure that the pointer is at the zero level. Otherwise, you are going to have what we call systematic error. So I check zero error to avoid systematic error. Those are some of the precautions. You have other precautions which you can go further. I said number one, I place my eye level horizontally when taking measurement on the meter rule to avoid parallax error. Number two, I check zero error to avoid systematic error when taking my reading, whether it is a meter rule you are using or it is a stop clock. You must check zero error to avoid systematic error. And that is what we have for the precautions. The next thing we are asked to find is the B part. I part of this here, what is meant by the period of oscillation of an oscillating body? What do we understand? What do you mean? What, when the question is asked this way, what is meant? It's the same as saying explain. It's one thing to ask to define something, another thing to explain. So after defining that thing, you go further to tell them more information about what it's all about. Oscillation, I mean, what we mean by period of oscillation is the time taken for an oscillating body to have the, the time taken for one complete oscillation is what we refer to as period of oscillation. I take it again. Period of oscillation simply means the time taken for one complete oscillation, which is what we have been able to get when we're trying to find capital T. We only divide. Whatever time taken for 20 complete oscillations by 20, that will give us the time it takes for one complete oscillation. And that's what we mean by period. Now, beyond defining this, you now go further to tell them period is a scalar quantity. Very important. Two, period 
is having his SI unit as second. And you can go further to tell them there is a relationship between period and lead of a pendulum, which is capital T is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. This is a relationship where G is a constant. It can be written as T is equal to 2 pi over square root of G square root of L. And that is to say T is proportional to square root of L. Further explanation can be made that way. That as length increases, you see that the period also increases. That's exactly what it is. That is what the explanation is all about. Then we have the B part of it. The second part of the B says, explain acceleration of free fall due to gravity. What is acceleration of free fall due to gravity? One, we define it. It simply means the force of attraction of the earth on a unit mass. Not just on a mass on a unit mass. That's what we simply mean by acceleration of free fall due to gravity. And then after defining it, you go further to tell them that in case you are asked to define, you stop there. But because you are asked to, you were asked to explain, you now explain by telling them more about what this acceleration due to gravity is all about. And after telling them that it is a force of attraction of the earth on a unit mass, you now tell them that a relationship exists between the force of gravity and mass of a body and then acceleration due to gravity. This is what we have. So when they say the unit mass, unit mass simply means mass of one. And so when m is one, then f will be one times g. The implication now is f is equal to g. That's just what it implies. So after defining what the acceleration of free fall is, you go further to now explain to them that this is what you have because it's unit mass, one multiplied by g, f is equal to g. And don't forget the unit remain Newton for this, or it could be taken for this and acceleration to gravity meter per second square. Beyond that, you tell them that it's a vector quantity. We said for a period that is a scalar quantity, you, this is a vector quantity. It's vector quantity because it always has a direction along which it attracts a body towards. Anybody that is going up tends to come back to the earth and it is vertically pointing downwards. But if it is going up, vertically up, there is going against gravity. And that is it. Anytime you have a body vertically going up, as soon as you do gravity, small g is negative. But when it is coming down, it is in line with the direction of acceleration due to gravity and is positive. And that's why we have this. So either plus or minus, depending on which direction, and then it must be vertical. If it's not vertical, it's horizontal, small g is zero. Anybody moving horizontally, small g is always taken as zero. The component is zero. And that's why we have this. So with this, you can go and uh, look at it over and over. And uh, there are other questions we are not asked here, which I expect you to go through. I want to give you very little work to keep yourself busy in addition to what has been asked here. Number one, explain what is meant by the following as applied to oscillating body. A, frequency. B, amplitude. Just like we explain periods, you also explain what frequency is, explain what amplitude is. Then number two, if the period of an oscillating body is 2.2 seconds for 130 centimeter length of that oscillating body, which is simple pendulum, you have to find the time or the period it will take for 100 centimeter. I take it again, number two. If the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum body is 2.2 seconds for 130 centimeter, find the corresponding period if the length shortens to 100 centimeter. And then, as I said, once dive to many questions, you have a lot. What is there as a clue is what we have here. This is a clue to the, big, the second part of the question. T is proportional, or we say T is proportional to square root of L. That's just that. I am Napoleon Kure with a contact number 080-3636-2105. Once again, I'm Napoleon Kure. 
0803636312105 Don't forget stay at home to stay safe and keep learning until your school opens keep busy so that we we have you with flying colors wish you the best i'm free from the pandemic going around thank you very much god bless you